Part six of A Lyriel, or A Voyage to Other Worlds, a tale by Vladislav Lachsimer. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter thirty A Night with Unearthly Friends. Would you like to retire? said Illyriel. You must be tired. I have prepared a couch for you here in this cabin from which I have moved our instruments. He touched a glistening crystal ornament at the side of the room, and instantly a sliding panel rose in the wall, disclosing a small cabin where some cushions were laid, covered with rich but quaint ornaments of fine embroidery. The cabin looked comfortable and gorgeously, though eccentrically, fitted. Do let us go back, whispered my wife. It seems dreadful to spend the night with these extraordinary beings. I would rather sleep in the meanest chalet on the slope than in this place. Why should you fear us? said Illyriel. What have we done or said to make you think that we would harm you? We would injure no one. Still, our ways, even our life, is not the same as yours, or under the same conditions. So if in any way you are distressed, say what you wish and we will obey. We retired to the cabin and were soon asleep on the soft couch. I awoke, however, after the first dose, by my wife calling me. I am so faint. I feel suffocating. What can the matter be? I feel the same, I said. The room is hermetically sealed. Ho! Oh, help! I called as I staggered to the door and knocked at it. A soft song answered. I tried the various crystals with which it was embossed. I could not open it, so I knocked more forcibly. It seemed a matter of life and death, for really, if, as it appeared, the room was without ventilation, we must shortly be suffocated. A soft song replied. I knocked again. Do let us have some air. There's not ventilation enough. Again a soft song. I knocked still louder. Then instantly the panel parted. I saw the two unearthly friends of Illyriel standing in the outer domed room, looking towards the cabin. He was not there. They knew, as I was aware, no earthly language. I could only make a sign to my mouth and draw a long breath to imitate breathing. The air in the outer room was purer, but still it was warm and close. However, actual suffocation was not risked there. I tried to make them understand we needed ventilation, but they could not comprehend me. I thought it best for us mortals both to go into the open air and breathe a while. They thought evidently, when I made for the outer entrance, I wished to leave them. However, by gestures I made signs we would return. They touched then the outer panel, and wrapping ourselves up, we passed into the fresh cold mountain air. It was a glorious, clear, starry night, and the white, snow-clad mountains loomed majestically around us. Having both recovered from faintness, we returned to the outer vault chamber. Aronial, it seemed, for that I understood was the being, with the silvery wings and great jewelled star hanging from his neck, had understood my pointing to my mouth as a symbol of need of food, so he had got ready for us a large green vase filled with what looked like some dried fruit but though really we were both rather hungry seeing our supper of bread and grapes had been a very light one we were afraid to eat it may be poison to us if it is food to them said maud oh do not eat it it is evident there is a danger of their killing us even without meaning us any harm that, I said, perhaps was the reason that Illyriel got for us the bread and grapes from the village. Still, the perfume of that food is very great, but I am afraid to eat any of it. It was a strange position to be in, on this earth, in company with beings, though so singular, seemingly good, and certainly benevolent to us, yet fearing to be killed at any time accidentally from the simple reason that our human life was linked by a thread too feeble for them to comprehend. 
i thus realized how impossible it would be for a man to exist even if he could get there in the condition of our earth life on any world but this of ours a lyrial entering soon dispelled our anxiety i motioned my trouble at him at once he quieted us by saying that he had lived long enough on earth to realize the conditions of our earth life and that there would be no danger from our being left alone as he would not depart from us while we remained in his ether car he opened with a burning bar a hole to ventilate our cabin we retired to rest again quieted by his assurance and refreshed by some more provisions which he had procured for us from a chalet not far off End of chapter 30